Oh, like this one. What's this? I don't even want to read this. What kind of font is this? Uh, this stuff is just garbage. So many of you out there may be looking for a job or changing jobs, and you need to write a resume. But you might have been out of the game for a while, or you just don't know how to do one. Well, I'm going to give you seven tips that you need to know. So check it out. Hello, and welcome to Hindsight 101, where you learn about things that will help you in everyday life. Now I'm going to tell you the seven tips that you need to know in writing a good resume. The first one is readability. You've got to please two people. First, the machine that's scanning it and the person that's actually looking at it. Now what I mean about a machine scanning it, you want to make it readable. You don't want to use any crazy fonts um, or any quirky style. You want to keep it very basic and easy to read. So what you want to do is outline kind of how you want it to go. You want to bold your titles, your name, make the their font a little bit bigger than the rest so the scanner can um, decipher what, what it needs to look at. But then on the other hand, you want to make it readable for a person. And that person may only have a few seconds to only a few minutes to look at your resume. So you need to wow them very quickly. So you want to put the important stuff that you need to sell yourself on at the beginning. You want to make it with readable font, not too small, not too big, not crazy like Comic Sans. Number two, what you want to do is update your resume. What I mean by that is update it often. So no, don't update it when you're applying for a job. That could be 20 years, that could be five years, you never know. You want to update it at least once a year because you never know what's going to happen, you never know what opportunity is going to come, or you never know what pitfalls are going to face you with downsizing, layoffs, anything. So you always want to be prepared and you always want to have your resume up to date and ready so you're not scrambling or wondering, how do I need to write this? It's been so long, I don't know what to do. Be prepared. Number three, you're going to want to write down your accomplishments, not your duties. No one wants to know that, you know, I scheduled, I kept the books, I did that. People want to know, I ran a $2 billion company. I managed 30 people. I saved the company $100,000. Tell your future employer about your accomplishments, not about your job duties. No one cares about that. They want to know how you're going to be a win for their company. Number four, make sure you get a copy of the job description and take out keywords. What you want to do is take some of those keywords and put them into your resume. That'll really impress an employer and that'll give them the chance to relate what you do to what they want you to do. So it kind of gives them a visual of um, how can I picture this person at our company. So keep that in mind. Take out keywords, whatever it is. Try to take out keywords that they're looking for. Say there's um, certain skill sets or different things that you need. Take those out if you have them or you've done them and put them into your resume. That'll make you stand out from the rest of the people who probably didn't do it. Now number five, just keep it simple. I like to say go back to basics. So I've mentioned it before, use basic fonts. Don't do anything too crazy or fancy. I know you may want to be creative and there's other ways you can be creative. You still have to make it readable for someone to want to look at it. My biggest pet peeve of resumes that I've seen come through my desk were emails. Now, hot girl sexy 99 may be great for you when you email your friends, but if for a future employer, get rid of it. You can go to any site, Yahoo, Gmail, Microsoft, they all give out free email, so it's not going to cost you anything and get something simple. You could either do, if your name is Bob Smith, B Smith, Smith B, just do something simple. So if someone wants to email you, it's easily remembered and it correlates with your resume because it's part of your name. You want to take out the technical jargon no one's going to understand except for the people that you worked with. You might have to change your title from something crazy that you had was Project Superstar, which no one knows what that means, but in actuality, you are Project Manager. So put that down. But make sure, 
whatever general title you use, closely relates to what you're doing. Number six, I can't say this enough, check for errors. Double check, run it through your spell checker, um, send it to a friend, actually send it to a couple of friends. Read it, put it down, come back to it an hour later. You'll never know how many errors that you whiz past because you know your resume and you skip past certain words because you assume they're correct when they're not. It happens to everyone, so always have a second pair of eyes to look at it. Because um, sometimes spell checker doesn't always catch a word if it's spelled right, but it just may, may be the totally wrong word. So always have friends, families. Also, we have a communications department at my job. So a lot of times I may have a friend or coworker take a look at it. You can hire somebody. There's tons of people, English majors, anybody that will take a look at your resume. A future employer will think if you can't pay attention to detail for something as simple as a resume, I'm not going to give you a job here managing people or handling billions of dollars. Lastly, number seven, this one's kind of a special one to me. Always make sure your resume is on hand. You never know when an opportunity is going to strike. A lot of you carry a cell phone. You can save it to your cell phone so you can easily email it to someone if you need to. I like to keep it in Dropbox because I can email it or if I have my desktop, I can email it from there. I can edit it on my phone. I can edit it on the desktop. So I'm a big fan of saving an updated copy of my resume in Dropbox. And you never know if someone says, shoot me your resume. I just send it to them. So and then I don't have to remember later, oh, I have to send some of my resume or oh, like I said, if you keep it updated, you can just shoot it off on hand and not send someone a couple days later because you need to review it, check some facts, have somebody look over it. You already have it ready. People will be impressed that you took a little time beforehand and you got it to them quickly. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this. And if you want to see more of this kind of content, hit subscribe.